leadership is so important but having the right leader is even more important and we see that today in our world when the leaders the wrong leaders are put in the position of power and authority they can abuse their power they can abuse their authority and if there's one person who came very strong on the leadership that was Jesus and that's what you're going to learn today from Matthew chapter 23 was 1 to 12 you know leaders that Christ rejects and in this 12 verses that we are going to look at five different qualities or description of leader that Jesus strongly rejected and we can look around and say oh these leaders and that leaders but also these qualities apply to even us because we are also in the position of leadership in different aspects in our lives so in verse 1 Jesus said then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples up till now he was talking to the Pharisees to the Sadducees now he's turning his attention to the crowd and to his disciples and at this point of time he's warning the crowd and his disciples on what kind of religious leaders they need to be careful about because if we follow someone blindly you know we can get hurt we can get abused so let's turn let's read verse 2 and 3 what does he tell his disciples and the crowd now if you read verse 3 it says, uh, it says that you know you must be careful to do everything they tell you now isn't that dangerous isn't that uh, isn't that something that we should be careful about in the first place not to obey somebody blindly but if you read verse 2 carefully there is a condition he says the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat the seat of Moses means basically the Torah because the five books of the law was given to Moses by God on Mount Sinai. As long as they are speaking and teaching and guiding from the Torah or the Bible and interpret it correctly, obey them. That's what Jesus is saying. You know, many times we reject the message because we don't like the messenger. And what Jesus is saying, if the message is true, follow it even if you don't like the messenger even if the messenger is not trustworthy follow the message if it is true which means that even as disciples you might see bad example in the church or bad example of Christian that does not mean the message is bad that does not mean the teachings of Jesus is wrong it is the messenger who is not following the message so what are the first thing that Jesus had against the religious leaders of his time? In verse 3 it says, they do not practice what they preach. Basically, it means that they would have different standard for themselves and different standard for others. Different expectation for themselves and different expectations for others. So we expect others to follow a certain standard, but then when it comes to us, we make exceptions. And so when our walk and our talk does not match brothers and sisters, we are hypocrites. Now the word hypocrite basically means an actor, a stage actors were called hypocrites because they would play, a, they would have a role play. So a good question we could ask ourselves, am I guilty of this accusation? Do I do what I ask others to do? Do I practice what I preach, what I teach others? Or am I like the Pharisees? being a hypocrite, living a double life. Now what are you supposed to do when you have leaders like that? And the, the answer is very clear. Do what they teach from the Bible, but don't follow their example. Basically do what is right. That's what Jesus is saying. Don't make excuses of other people's life and example. Too many of us make excuses for our sin. We blame it on others. Or because so-and-so did it, I did it. Because that person said something, I said that. Because my parents were not a good example, I turned out this way. You are called to do what is right, even if everyone around you is not doing what is right. The standard is not the people around you. The standard is the Bible, the Word of God. The second thing that Jesus had against the leaders, the religious leaders of his time in verse 4. The second thing is they place heavy burdens on people. Basically what Jesus was saying is that you are making it difficult for people to walk according to God's command by adding a lot of man-made rules. For example, you know, you are supposed to bring sacrifice, animal sacrifice to the temple without any blemish 
or without any you know wounds but then the religious leaders would define what is acceptable or not acceptable supposed to pay the temple that they would decide which currency was acceptable in the in the temple what you could do and cannot do on the sabbath how many steps can you take what is considered work and what is not considered work on a sabbath these were all the rules that the pharisees made when the simple rule on the in the 10 commandments was just fall obey the sabbath honor the sabbath keep the sabbath day holy that was all that jesus god said but the the pharisees the leaders of the law added all the different things of the do's and the don'ts the religious leaders of jesus time were able to convert the 10 commandments into 613 commandments or laws that even today the jews follow it no wonder the people of that time were weary and burdened on one hand they were weary and burdened by the roman rule on the other hand they were burdened by all these rules that were imposed by the religious leaders no wonder jesus said in matthew chapter 11 verse 28 and to 30 that his teaching is light and what jesus said my yoke is easy and my burden is light Following Jesus' example, obeying his teachings is not a burden, as many think. In fact, it frees us from being a slave, from being burdened, from being weary. It frees us, frees us from being slave to our sin and bad habits. It frees us from being a slave of people around us by trying to please them. It frees us from being slave to the world and the rules which keep changing. You know, rather than living by rules, what is important is we got to live by principles because rules bind us while principle frees us you know, rules you know make us slave while principle you know guides us in any and every situation you know rules are imposed from outside whether we like it or not because if we don't follow that rule if we break the rule then basically we know that there is a penalty or a punishment or a fine and that fear makes us follow the rules and a principle comes from inside it compels us to do what we think is right or correct because it's a choice that we make while rules can be forced so let us not be binded by the rules of this world let's live by principles that we find in the scripture something that i love about the bible is a book of principles which was applicable 2000 years ago it even works today the principle never changes the, se the second thing that we saw was the, the, the religious leaders, they just made a lot of rules and made it heavy for people to follow. Let's look at the third thing that Jesus had against the religious leaders of his time in verse 5. The third thing that Jesus had against them is they practice their righteousness as a show for people to see. It said they, they, had, they, they made the, uh, what is it called, phylacteries or phylacteries. Uh, it's like a small leather box if you see on the screen and it had scriptures written on a parchment and they would put inside and when they would pray it would be on their forehead as you see an arrow around their left arm you know they basically literally took Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 18 seriously because in verse 18 it says tie them as a symbol on your hand and bind them on your foreheads so they, they literally took this seriously until today when the Jews pray they do this and the scripture that is written in this is basically from the book of Exodus chapter 13 and Deuteronomy chapter 6 now what was that that the Pharisees did that was wrong when they would pray they would have this big thing instead of small thing they would keep it big because they wanted everybody to see the intention was not to worship God the intention was to get credit from people you know for them to see that see how religious I am how awesome I am how godly I am by their outward appearance they wanted people to they wanted people's approval they wanted recognition from people around them they like to be noticed by people appreciated by people encouraged by people lifted by people you know many times we can we are like the Pharisees and we don't even realize it we also like to be recognized. We also like to be appreciated. We also like for people to be to notice. How we do that? How do we do that? You know, we like to keep talking about our past, our past achievements, or even our past struggles. How hard life has been, and how much I struggled. 
and I have come up. We like to talk about that. And when we do that, we are trying to seek attention from people. Or when we help people around or we serve people, we expect people to encourage us, pat our backs, share about us to everybody. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 3, Jesus said that do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Let's look at the fourth thing that Jesus was not happy with the Pharisees of his time, the leaders of his time in verse 6. The fourth thing was that they want to be seen and noticed and recognized as spiritual important people. So when there was a banquet or a get together, they would take the most important seat, the honored seat, uh, which was normally kept close to the person, you know, next to sitting next to the, the host of the banquet. They would want that because that would be the focus. Or if it is in the synagogue, then they would want to sit right on the front, very close to where the scrolls or the laws were kept, because that is where people would be looking at. They would be visible for everybody to see. The desire to have to be important or be in prominence comes out of a deep-rooted insecurity and low self-worth. Like in today's time, it would be like you know taking selfies wherever we go. We want to take selfies. We want to be in every picture taken in every program and then we want it to be posted on the social media for everyone to see. Now I'm not saying it is wrong, but I'm saying if you keep doing that all the time, ask yourself, why am I doing this? Is it out of deep insecurity? Do I want to be recognized and people to know me and see me? And the fifth and the last thing we see in verse 7, they love to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and be called rabbi by others. They loved titles. They loved the title that comes with this status being called Rabbi or Teacher. It was a title of respect for religious people and they loved those titles that came with their responsibility. Now titles in themselves is not necessarily wrong but placing undue emphasis on them and insisting on people to call you that is basically being arrogant and being a hypocrite in a titles like being called doctor or reverend or pastor or leader or evangelist and different words we insist on people using that in front of us that just shows that how insecure we are and we need that title to make us feel important you know the, the only title that we need to desire and is the, the title of being a Christian being a follower of Christ. And that is something that you don't have to you know, tell everybody. People should be able to see it by our life and action. Let's read with 8 to 10 as we close out. Now many times when we read this, it can be very confusing. Does it mean that I can't call somebody teacher or I can't call my dad father? Is that what Jesus is saying? What Jesus is saying is do not be driven by pride and position or arrogance or power that comes with that title. Don't abuse that title. When you keep seeking or proclaiming a title or using the title for the sake of personal honor is opposite of humility. And what Jesus is calling us is that we got to be humble. So we saw the five things that Jesus rejected in the, the, in the, the, the religious leaders. So how are we supposed to live our lives? And we learn with verse 11 and 12. Basically, it is very similar to Jesus I have said this many other times, the first will be last. It's a principle that Jesus preached on numerous occasions where he calls us to serve with humility. Many times we misunderstand humility. Now we think being humble or humility is being weak or being soft spoken or being very quiet and we think that is being humble. That's not humility. You know, humility is you know, when you are wrong. You acknowledge that you are wrong. You accept responsibility. When you're willing to listen to other people and their opinions, even if they're different and putting yourself in their shoes and trying to understand them rather than forcing your opinion on others, that is humility. When you encourage others and lift others up without expecting anything back. When you're open about your life, your struggles, your sin, when you're real, where you're not trying to put up a show to look good, that's humility. When you're willing to forgive the one who has hurt you even if that person does not come and come to you to apologize, that's humility. When we are considerate towards others, not always time, you know, we need to have our own way or have the last say, that's humility. 
And when we live a life of humility, Jesus says that, you know, God would exalt us. In conclusion, brothers and sisters, what are you struggling with this morning? Are you the one who, you know, does not practice what you preach? Then you are a hypocrite. Are you the one who plays heavy burden on other people, make rules? Then you are a dictator or an authoritarian person. Are you the one who always seeks attention? Then you are a very needy person with low self-esteem and low self-worth. Are you the one who desires to be recognized? Then you love yourself too much. And lastly, do you love titles? Then you are a very insecure person. And these are the five things that Jesus did not like in the, the leadership of his time. He does not like this in, even in our own lives. So let's, ident let's look at us like, where do I need to change? What are the things I need to repent of? And if you don't know, ask someone who knows you well. Ask your spouse, ask your family members, ask your friends who knows you well. And they will tell you what are the things you need to change so that we all can become more and more like Jesus.